So reports is the second piece of the entire Creator 5 puzzle that we have. And really reporting is kind of the most important part of any application. Because if you're not, what do you call it, looking at your data and making sure it's structured and organized in a proper way, then what do you call it, you're going to have problems down the line. And so we're going to jump right into reporting itself. So back in the day, or maybe even some of your um, colleagues or your clients, if you're a partner, generally they're going to handle reporting in a very manual way. Um, so in Charles's visitor management example, generally you might have a paper form that's kind of someone enters their name and email address information in, and then you want to try and figure out who showed up that day. There's no good way of searching it, right? So obviously back in the day before computers and color pictures, as you can see here, you would just have a bunch of people in a bunch of filing cabinets trying to figure out um, where certain pieces of information are, and this is their full-time job. Um, even today with the world of technology and software and all the different reporting apps we have, there's people whose full-time job is literally, literally to do reporting. Um, unless your reports and spreadsheets or your applications have data formatted like this. In this case, it might take you 30 minutes to kind of figure out what exactly is going on. But yeah, basically, you know, you can have a spreadsheet, it does a lot of things, but to actually get any kind of analytical information out of this, it's going to get pretty complicated pretty quickly, um, which is where tools like Creator obviously come in, come in play. Um, and it all comes down to basically how you manage and how you organize that data. And that goes back to managing the data, because really at the end of the day, you can't really improve or make something better if you don't really know how to uh, measure it. But in our case, for people who are using applications on a day-to-day -day basis, you might not be able to perfectly measure um, a user's productivity in an application, or maybe even how much more productive they are with this application. So it's always funny to me that you might see a lot of reports or, or websites that say, um, using our software, people are 30% people are more productive. How they got that number is literally, I, I made it up, to be honest with you, because there's no way you can really measure human productivity, especially an increase in, in human productivity. It just depends on the tool and how valuable it is to them, and more importantly, how much better insights they can get based on the applications that they're using. So long story short and weird story, can't manage something you can't measure. And when it comes to measuring things, the data is going in in a certain format based on generally your forms or some third-party data source or importing data. And that data is just coming in as raw, generally text information, right? Um, all the field types Charles talked about earlier, date fields, number fields, um, text fields, addresses, and all that stuff. But the real important part and the real value of reporting in general is not just reactive reporting, but being able to see things beyond what the text is displaying, right? So your most notable and most common way of reporting is generally the list view, right? Every time you make a form, we make it very easy for you and make a list report automatically because that's the way we're most common way where we use kind of visualize that information, right? We're used to it in spreadsheets, we're used to it in other, in other tools in general, and the list report is just line after line of text, right? Um, which works in certain situations, but it doesn't work in certain situations because um, there's a lot of features that that list view kind of is missing, which is what I'm going to be talking about a little bit more here that enables someone to visualize information better and more importantly consume it in order to make more actionable items or decisions in the future for themselves. So going back to a creator application in general, there's three main parts to it essentially. And so your creator application is your database as a whole. And so you have the first step collecting information. So like I mentioned before, you have the forms, you're importing data, you're bringing it in from third party sources, maybe via API calls or um, some other magical method. But once you bring that information in through a form, it's obviously organized, right? Depending on how good you made that form, it'll be organized in a good or bad manner, right? So examples of good and bad forms, let's say you have a name field. Before Creator 5, there wasn't a name field, so you might make a first name and a last name field, or you just might make a generic name field, right? So if you want to send an email and say, you know, dear first name, you wouldn't have been able to do so if it was just a general name field, right? So depending on how you organize it, that information's coming in and it's gonna be, you know, sorted and formatted in a proper manner. But the most important part is the last step, and that's rapid retrieval. Because all the data that's going into the application, the most important part isn't really information going in, but it's more so how you visualize the information that's already inside that system. And so we're gonna be focusing on that third bullet point here in a bit. But just to start off, we'll do Obviously forms, like I mentioned before, is collecting information. Your list reports keeps everything a little bit organized. And your visual elements is the rapid retrieval aspect, right? So the visual hierarchy is gonna be the focus. So I'll give you a couple examples here. Um, this is, let's say you have a sales management app, maybe customer management. Your employees are basically entering information about deals they're working on, and you've built this whole complicated pseudo CRM system to match your uh, unique business needs inside Creator itself. So there's three different kinds of reports you can technically run here. Um, none of which you would really find accurately if you had just used normal list reports because a lot of the visual hierarchy is gonna be missing. 
So there's business results, there's sales objectives, and then activity metrics, right? And so all three of these have different end goals and different purposes for the reports you're running for them. And if you try to push them all together in a single section or um, in a single set of reports, it's going to get very misleading. So making multiple reports that fit exactly your need is the important part. Because then you don't ever have to tell anybody that you're spending 30 minutes running some reports because you've already got the reports already created. And you can make dashboards and stuff like that. So just a couple of examples of types of reports you can make that will show different types of things that people are doing inside the application or how business is going in general. So this is an example of basically a list, port, a list report that we normally have. However, it's got a new interface that's called Card View. And so these cards, um, this is just a list of rest, popular restaurants in different cities um, in Austin, where I'm from, LA, and then New York is kind of at the bottom here. And so you can see that when you have a, if you had an entire list of, uh, what do you call it, restaurants without a picture and without any kind of visual hierarchy, it becomes a little bit difficult to kind of consume that information at a high level. Here you can kind of see the insides or even plates of food at different places. So you can kind of tell something that's going to be fancy versus something that's going to be maybe just a fast food joint. Another way of visualizing it is, or this is another way of visualizing, sorry, the cards in general. And you can change the design layouts, which I'll show you a couple more examples about in a second. But most importantly, the cards that you're designing for web obviously need to look a little bit different than how they're being rendered on mobile. Any mobile app you use that has a web counterpart, you can tell that there are some things that have been kind of either hidden or pushed to off to an off menu or different ways data is visualized. Just because on a mobile device, screen real estate is limited, and you want to make sure the most important information is available and the rest is kind of um, hidden off. So different layouts for different devices is super important. Security at the end of the day. So with any kind of reporting and whenever you give people access to application, security is one of those things that people kind of maybe forego or don't really realize how much of an impact it can have on an application. So making sure when you build an application for yourself and allow other people to access it, making sure it's locked down so nobody's doing anything that they're not supposed to be doing is super important. And so those security permissions can be things like exporting data, it can be things like mostly exporting because you don't want people to run away with your data. So generally, these are things you kind of want to turn off. Going back to reports, I'm going to dig reports into basically three different categories. That First, go on that visualize step that I talked about a little bit earlier. Then we're going to go into the modification or actually interacting with the reports in real time when you're using them to make tweaks or, quote, run reports for 30 minutes. And then the last part is the analysis or more like the intelligence you get from reporting themselves. So the first part is the visualization aspect. So I'll go back to this car, car example. So let's say I have a little spreadsheet kind of situation going on here. I've got a list of all my customers, the date the car gets picked up, the type of service that they want, car washes, general service, oil changes, whatever, the car types that they have, when they want the car back, and who the mechanic or who the representative or the employee is that's going to be working on this. This is just what we call basically visually very flat. There's no hierarchy of information, so you don't really know what's important on this page because there's so much information on it, right? Um, so this is another way we can kind of have it displayed where now we've got pictures in it. So we could do this before in Old Creator, and it was pretty basic. You can add a little bit of formatting to it to make car washes a certain color. You can make service a certain color. Um, and then full service is black here, or blue, one of the color types. Um, but basically, it gives you a little bit better visualization of the actual car you're working with. Rather than saying black Audi you know, sedan at the very top, you now have a picture of it, so you know exactly what you're working with. So whenever a customer comes in, you take a picture of their car, and then you can display it, and then it'll be a lot easier to work with and track in the future. But if we take it a step further, we can actually do the card view as well. And now we see a little bit more information on the same place. And maybe the card doesn't need to be as big as it was on the previous screen. But now we've got the information kind of laid out in an easier way to manage. And you can take it a step further and do different card types. So we have the same card that can be organized in a bunch of different ways, um, both on desktop and on mobile. It doesn't really matter. You can pick your own cards for whatever um, you know, device you kind of have. And you can make them look and feel however you really want to. You can change them out, uh, pick the fields, add different colors on them, put a circle picture, maybe crop it into a square, and visualize it. Then the last step is obviously groupings, right? So you have a bunch of data. And in the previous screen, before the pretty animation, you know everything kind of looks the same. You're not really grouping it by anything. So being able to group it based on statuses or based on um, mechanics. So if I go back, we basically have every service request based directly on um, the individual that's the mechanic that's working on it, right? So if you're building creator apps for the admin, maybe you want to see everything on a high level and group it based on reps. If you're building reports for your reps, um, generally what you want to do is things like, we'll get into criteria and Prakash is going to show it. And what we have with the criteria side is you have something where you can say where 
the service request belongs to the person that's logged in, right? So now you have a report that says my request that each rep sees their own. You don't have to make 15 requests for each different employee. You can use dynamic different criteria based on whose information it belongs to. And uh, we'll go through that in a little bit. Next step, modification. So these are just quick actions that you can do when you're actually interacting with the application itself, right? So you're, when you're in a report view, you're basically able to search information, which you can also, based on security, turn on and off, import data, exporting data. You can sort things, group things, filter things, and do bulk actions on them. So these are all just the modification actions that can happen when you're looking at a list of data, whether it's in card format, whether it's in list format, doesn't really matter. They're just group actions that can be done. And so you can take that list format and kind of take it a step further. So now you've got this calendar report, and basically you have these time bars for when, how long we have the car in for service. And basically all I have to do is drag and drop one of these two ends and I can shrink the amount of time in the service or I can move you know, the Audi A6 in green on the first row and move it to next week and just drag and drop it. So instead of having to go into the record, pick two different date fields and reconfigure you know, three days, I already know it's a three day event. All I have to do is drag and drop that bar to the next week and then the time differential stays the same. Um, it's just moving the dates around. So being able to interact with this kind of a report is something you would have never been able to do in a list view in itself. Similarly, we have a Kanban view, and here you can drag and drop things. In this case, it's based on assigned mechanics, but generally it's things like statuses or assignments is where you have Kanban, where you can just pick up a card like the Audi A6 where the mouse is right now, and then drag it over to Daniel, and then it'll be assigned to Daniel. And then maybe you have a workflow that's triggered whenever a car gets assigned to a new rep, they get a push notification or whatever about it, um, and are able to get notified that this new thing is available, or this new car is available for them to service. Analysis. So you have uh, obviously charting capabilities, right? So being able to see things in text format is one thing, but being able to see aggregate data easily through a visual chart is obviously super, super important. But back to the running reports for 30 minutes concept, you want to be able to drill into these reports and see more detailed information at the click of a button rather than just seeing like a static image that's rendered based on you know, the current state of affairs. So here, if I look at these March um, service requests, I can go ahead and click into this blue bar specifically, and I can see all the different requests that have come in for that month of March, right? So here I can see it based on the different car brands um, individually. Then I can um, drill down even further. On this example, we'll drill down further into the Audis, and we'll go into the specific car models of out of that 40% of Audis, what are the most common types of cars we're getting? So here I've got the A4, the A5, the A6, and then a bunch of unknown Audi models. I, why they're unknown, I don't know. We just didn't, we just didn't track them. But A4, A5, A6 are most commons, and so that makes up a majority of the services, things we're requesting. So if you want to go in and pre-order a bunch of supplies for those specific cars, it's very easy to do. And it's something that you wouldn't normally be able to do if you made a static report. It can only be done by you know, clicking in and kind of exploring where is the holes in the data and what is the changes we can make in our organization to accommodate the different changes that are going on within the business itself. Uh, so I'm going to have Prakash come up. He's going to show this fancy example about bike sharing. Thank you, Tejas. Good afternoon, all. This is Prakash. So far, you have seen how to visualize the data, how to modify the data, and how to analyze the data. Now, it's action time. So let me demonstrate you how to do these things in Creator. And for this demonstration, uh, let me take the bike sharing app as an example. I have pulled up some uh, sample data from Ford Go Bike program. And these are the informations. Each row represents a trip uh, for bike, and uh, the column gives you the detail, the user type, start and end, uh, station, start and end time, and so on. And I have structured the application in this way. So trip detail in one form, station detail in another form. And I have combined the both to create the relationship. This is the application that I have imported. Probably uh, Charles will explain to you how to do the import thingy. I did the same. So I have a form for trip details, and I have a form for station details. And you may notice, whenever you create a form, create a report by default. So you can see the report over there, yeah. You can either make, make use of that, or you can create your own. So now let me pick the all station details, and let us change the visualization of this uh, report. You can see this report is now in a tabular structure. So in order to change the visualization, Let's edit the application. You can see the pencil icon on the top right. Click on that. It leads you to the design page of the application. And you can see navigations on the top, preview in the center, and on the right, you will have the configuration. 
you can change the visualization by changing the layout. How can I do that? I can simply go and click the particular uh, layout. It will open up the field mapping window, where I can able to choose a field from the drop down, or I can pick any other I want. I think I'm pretty fine with the default selection, so let me close and see how it will look like in the live application. And you notice when I close it down, it immediately reflects in the preview. Let us access and see. Um, yes, the data get changed. And I have some of the pictures or the stations here. Um, now you see the table structure has been turned into a car, more like a card structure. Even I can do furthermore customization for a particular card. Let me go back to the design mode and click the card again to open up the field. And I can, there is an option on the top says what, what's the, sh or the shape of the image. I can choose the circle. You can even change the alignment or position of the image. By clicking the card, you'll have the alignment option. Let me make it as right. So let us take a look. Access. Now the visualization gets changed. By simply changing the layout, you are changing the visualization. Um, in the first one, we have a table. It's a purely grid structure. And in the second one, image on the, uh, image on the left, it draws more attention. Now in the third one, image on the right will get less attention and put the station name in the top priority. So by changing the layout, you are changing the visualization. You are changing the perception of a record. And by the way, this whole window is called as quick view, where you can take a quick glance of records. Whenever you select a record, it opens up the detail view. It gives the complete information about a particular record. And this window even is able to customize. Let me show how to do the customization for detail view. Click, edit this application and go back to the design mode. And you can see a tab close next to the quick view called detail view. Click on that, you'll have a similar set of options over here. So first one is the default option with uh, label name on the left, value on the right. Second one is pretty advanced one. When you click on that, you can see you can able to create multiple blocks. And each block can be have a, a piece of information. Uh, and also, you can able to organize your all the records in a single window based on some category. Uh, for example, let me start with um, Basic info, so that in this category, in this block, I would like to show only the name and the doc count. So let me remove the other fields. How can I do that? Select the field, click on the delete. You can see the delete on the top. So select, delete. That's it. So I have the basic information. So there is an option, add block. When you click on that, it automatically creates the block with the fields of the form. Now, let me call it as more info, and I remove the station name on the dark one, as I have already in the previous category. Like I have organized a single record in multiple category using blocks. So let us take a quick look in the line mode. Select a record. It shows me how the data get organized. Even if a record has image. Um, It gives me the detail. And this block is not only pulling the information from the same form. You can also pull the information from the related form. So you can also get the information, whichever related to this form, uh, using the lookup. Let me show how to do that. Let me go back to the edit mode and click on the detail view. Click on the layout again. All the way down, you will have an option called related block. So once you click on that, you will have an option that asks for the which on which relationship you want to create the block. As I said earlier, I have a lookup um, in the trip details. And I'm, let me choose the start station details so that I will pull up all the trips started from this particular station. So create the block. And name it as trips from here. Let us take a look. OK. You can see along with the basic and more information, you'll have the trips 
that all started from here. Station name, where the bike started, is similar to the same as the what I have selected. The same way you can pull up all the orders of a customer when you select a customer. You can pull up all the invoices of an order when you select an order. So this window will help you to do a lot more things. All right, we have seen how to visualize the data in quick view and as well as in the detail view. Now let's do some modification. For that, let me take the trip details. I have a bikes listed here, and you can see a field says user type. This will give you the information like whether the biker is a customer or a subscriber. The typical way of doing modification is simply edit the record, opens up the form, change the type, and submit it again. But this time, we do have a Kanban to do that. So let us create a Kanban report. Again, back to design mode. You can see a plus icon on the top bar. So typically, this is used to create any new component and creator. Let me click on that. Choose report and select Kanban. This is the same way you can create any other type of report. Since I'm going to organize all the bikes by user type, uh, let me choose the trip detail and user type field. And the Kanban can be created based on any single select drop down or um, radio button. Let me name it as user management. So. And you may notice you will have the same set of uh, visualization option for this report also. So you will get the visualization as well as it allows you to do modification. When you access this application, you can see the records, which means the bikes are organized in uh, by user type. If a 872 want to move as a subscriber, simply drag and drop. If any workflow associated with this record will be executed immediately after I moved. All right. I have um, visualized the data and I have did some modification. Now let's do some analysis. Let's take the same trip details. And we have a column says member birth year, which says the biker's year of birth. Let us do some analysis with that data. Let's go back to the design mode and create a report, but this time we will create a pivot chart. I'm choosing the trip details because I'm going to do the analysis based on the table. What I'm going to do now? I'm going to create a bar chart where, uh, where it pulls the number of bikes taken by the people and order it by the uh, year of birth. And this report builder is slightly different from the previous one. On the left, you will have the columns. On, on the top, you will have the configuration. And in the middle, you will have the preview. Since I'm going to do the analysis based on the member birth year, let me drag and drop it over here. So once I click generate, it immediately shows me the real-time preview. It's not just a, a virtual image. It's real-time preview. We'll have all the uh, data plotted in a bot chart. And also, you, you can able to change the visualization in the top. Okay, it can be a line chart, or it can be a bot chart. Let us take a look how this report will look in the line mode. And you see? I could see a peak 1988. So people born in 1988 like, ride small bike. Great. And I could see some of the people who born in 1947 also ride bikes. Cool. If I want to know more about them, I can click to open it up. And I'll have the list of infamous bikes that ride whose uh, birth year is 1947. And also I have the option to do the filtering and sorting so that I can manipulate the data. And I have built a few other um, reports to show you how to analyze the data. The same bike information, but this time it's a, it gives you the weekly trend. I have plotted the number of bikes taken by the uh, bikers and plotted in the day week, day of week. And you can, it's pretty much expected. Uh, weekends get less number of bikes than the weekday. But here you can go even more deeper. If you want to know more about Sunday, click on that. Choose the drill down option, and you can go deeper. Now let us check the more deeper about Sunday. And those 9,000 odd numbers are plotted by hours. So and you can see there is a 
people do uh, ride bikes in the noon during weekends if you check the same trend in the weekday you could see the difference business hours has more number of bikes so it gives you the info, information it gives you the insight so that you can you can plan according to this and you can improve the business also i have hourly trend it's pretty much expected peaks in the business hours and the one which we showed earlier like uh, graph based on the birth of year but when you say um, the year of birth it's pretty much uncomfortable to calculate the age by getting the difference from current age and on the year of birth so creator offers you the formula field or you can do uh, do the math and do the calculation to get the difference between current year and the year of birth to get the age i just simply plotted the age field in the graph it gives you the inverse and it says yeah people from 25 to 30 years ride more bikes and yes people at 30 rides higher average bikes than other other people also you can do some of the analysis on stations like uh, the top 10 stations based on based on their um, usage or how long they ride their bikes and so on so we we did some visualization we did some modification and we did some analysis also but creator as uh, poten creator's potential is very vast so we can do enormous thing using creator in term in the context of report let me quickly give you the glimpse uh, what the creator can do let me take the station detail and you may notice an option action next to the layout so reports not only allows you to visualize the data it also allows you to do the action on a particular record so any operation over a record is called as action here we provide a various default actions like edit duplicate on a you can trigger it on a particular event so for you can run an event for a single record or you can write your own script and you can create your own action and you can run it for a um, multiple records you have a plus icon on this click on this will leads you to the workflow section and you can write your own workflow so a piece of workflow to execute that function so simply all you need to do is select the record execute that function it will execute that workflow also we do have data operations like filter grouping sorting in the list report it's pretty much straight forward so filter will help you to drill down the record it helps you to narrow down the record by writing a condition in this case if i want to uh, write a filter to get, get all the customers uh, who are riding bikes i need to simply tell the status as uh, here it's a station deal so if i want to look up the stations which are all in open status equals open gives me gives me the all the open stations here also i am able to group the data as the one you have seen in this presentation so you can group by mechanics or you can group by station name you can group by city sorting is pretty much straight forward you can sort the data but in creator 5 we do have an option to sort on your own so there is an option called custom sort so when you select the custom sort you can give your own sorting order other than uh, ascending and descending quick filter is pretty much similar to the filter but you can apply the filter in the run time while you seeing the record you can able to apply the filter custom filter is a combination of quick filter and the filter probably uh, if you want to know the people who are whose ages are above 30 and who rides bike more than a hour you can write the both uh, combination of rules and when you execute that uh, custom filter it will get the list of people whose ages are 30 uh, greater than 30 and who rides bike more than more than an hour presentation let's recap it on like Uh, we do have the visualization modification and an analysis in zookater and zookater uh, report supports you to do these things and we have seen uh, how to visualize in quick view as well as in the detail view and we saw some uh, kanban to do the modification and we created few charts and looked out few examples of charts to get to know how to do the analysis and finally we just saw the uh, actions and the data operations